Alright. So, first of all, let's start with the intro. I saw some people commenting they wanted to hear how I did it. I'll turn the camera away and hopefully you can see enough. So, here we go. So, the intro is really simple. Let's start. It's just a kick uh, with the filter. So, the first thing I do always in the intro, I have on my master channel, I have a filter that cuts out the low frequencies uh, for the intro. Then I have the main synth, uh, the, the, the rhythmic synth, already in the intro. And that is because I really wanted to make it sound like like a one like one track. So it already starts vibing with the the drop vibes, you know. And this track is really like rhythmic. Uh, it's like rhythm based, so that's why I also or also added a lot of percussion elements in the intro. So we have two toms here. These two, they already start bouncing. Uh, two highest loops. Really simple. I layer them on top of each other to make it a little bit more special. And also these two, um, like I cut out the low end of the hi hat loop. And this one is quite heavily side chained. Because for me it had a better groove and I didn't want uh, the rides on the on the kick. Then there's a clap on top of the kick and a clap in between. There's nothing really special happening with these claps. Only um, this is FL Studios Stereo Shaper. Zoom in a bit on it. Uh, I use it a lot, like on a lot of sounds. Um, the thing is, it's super easy to use. You just uh, turn the delay knob to the left or the right, and that will give you a great stereo effect because you're like delaying the left speaker or delaying the right speaker. And yeah, this is perfect on like claps and percussion sounds. So these two claps are layered on top of each other and they have a different stereo shape. So one delays the left channel, one delays the right channel and together it sounds like one clap that is super wide. It's a really good trick to use on these kind of sounds. And that is a lot of the intro already at least the first part. This is the fill from the drop, I will explain it later. Here I start building with uh, the drop sounds. Um, of the, the break sounds, I'm sorry. Uh, this is basically the intro, the only thing is that over here Halfway through the intro, um, the filter goes down, so there's no filter anymore. And you get the deep low frequencies. Let's see. So then we get to the break. Um, the first break, I really wanted to build like immediately start building. So I added the claps, just constant claps, immediately some rise samples that just start building and building. Some one note like a bass. It's a really simple silent bass. Uh, it's a sign I think. It's it's a saw and a sign with the filter. Nothing really special. This is just the deep, the deep sound. But it fills it up and the, the, it fills up the low frequencies in the club. 
Um, this one, it starts pitching over here. It starts rising to build up. There's a string you can just to build tension. It's a simple nexus uh, string. Um, but the main thing of the breakdown is the vocal, of course. And to everyone, uh, yes, it's me. <laughs> I recorded these vocals myself. Uh, I can show you the other project where I will explain how I made the vocals because my voice sounded like shit, but I made it work, I think. And I bounced them out and just placed them in this project file. So I have a different project with the vocals. And then there's one more important thing, and those are the break leads. Here's the melody. And it's uh, some kind of brass sound. Actually, uh, there are three layers, and let me turn off the filter. So it's a uh, brass sound and some super soft layered below it. And then I turn on the filter because of the vocal, otherwise it was too much in the way of each other. And that's basically it. Then we have a snare roll over here. And every everything just starts building up, building up, building up. And um, here I use the, the filter on the master again to filter out the low frequencies uh, just before the drop. So I think that's it. And like the name of the track came from the sample I found. It says dirty dirty bass line. Um, dirty dirty bass line. I found it and that's why the track is called Dirty Bass Line and also why the other vocals are about that. Dirty dirty bass line. Dirty dirty bass line. Like the fill has some small Ooh, impact sound. It's really soft. And some snares. Dirty, dirty dirty so then onto the drop. It's uh, actually quite simple. Let's start with a cool small trick. Um, as you can see, maybe the kick drum is from Hartwell's Echo track. I don't know how I, how I got it. I think I found it online somewhere. Um, what I did, I reversed, put a small kick reversed before the first hit, and this way it's like it sucks you into the drop. So I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a reversed kick before the first one. And this track is it, it's really simple. Um, there's a bass line. And it's just one note from silent. Uh, and it's a sine and a saw with a filter over here. And that's basically it. It's going into the mixer. Um, and there's a, only a pro Q and an LFO tool on top of it. The equalizer hardly does anything. Um, this peak, as you can see, it boosts the second second harmonic of the the bass because I felt like it gave more drive to the to the track. And then the the side chain is set up like this. And that's it. But. Um, the sidechain is really can be really difficult to set up in a track like this, so that's why I bought this 
cool little tool over here. I hope you can see it. It says sub pack. Wait, let me turn on some lights. Hope you can see it better. This is a sub pack. Look it up online. What it does is you connect it with a cable over here to your sound card. So here's my sound card. Here's the cable. You connect it. You turn it on and then it vibrates the lower frequencies into your body and I love this too, it's, it's really really amazing and it's super accurate as well so you can literally like feel the bass as, it, as if you're in a club and you can feel if the kick is overlapping with the, with the low frequencies so when you turn it on maybe you can even hear it vibrating now I turn it really loud. So look it up. It's a great tool to mix the low frequencies in your track. And um, yeah, that's how I did it. So back to the track. We have like this perk little FM sound. Um, this sound is from Serum. It's an FM based patch. Um, I haven't made it myself. It's from a pack. Um, and what I did with it, I have this little tool. It's a stereo maker and it makes the sound really wide. And it really helped the track sound much, much bigger. Um, for the rest we have a gamma pressure on there, I love this tool. An EQ, and this EQ is super important. I'll show you the details. Um, especially here at the low end. Um, I also use the set pack for this, because in the patch there's a lot of low frequencies in, in, the, in the sound. Um, and I read you really feel like where the, these frequencies if they weren't interrupting with the kick and the bass line. So that's why I used the sub pack and you can immediately feel like that, that this is a sweet spot, sweet spot and you don't have any interference with the bass lining and the kick drum. Um, I think that with without a sub pack it would be much more difficult to find the sweet spot. It's still possible. But um, yeah. Also, I cut it off some some of the high end because it was just like this clicky sound, and it's not really needed because we have the other layer. Also, the MIDI for this is just playing straight simple notes. One thing I did for this track was put everything in some kind of swing. Like if you see this note, it should be like here, but I put it a little bit to the right. Now. I think I used Logic 16C preset, you can get it, and it's a swing format that a lot of guys use. And it makes the track much more groovy. So then onto the main sound. Um, it's actually just one sound, and it's a sample. And if I turn off all the effects, it sounds like, like this. That's a sample. Then I made the melody with some glide notes in the Val Studio. Let's add these, these small notes. Um, and then with the effects, let me show you what I put under it. It's quite a lot. These are the effects. So it's a basic an EQ. I always start with an EQ, filter out some of the unwanted frequencies that you don't need. I use Camel Crusher a lot, I just showed to you. Uh, it's a great tool, especially the distortion and uh, compressor. I use this guy again, it's a stereo tool from Single Makers. It's like one of the most simple stereo tools, but on some sounds it works really, really great. Um, then this small dimension expander, 
It's a free tool from X Fur Records. And if I, yeah, it makes it like um, you get the bathroom effect on your on your sound a little bit. Um, we have another EQ. This is hardly used. Just a slight, slight boost in the top end. This one is actually quite cool. I don't know if you guys know FM8, but I loaded it in as an effect, so you can use the effects in FM8. And if you watch these lines over here, this automation, this uh, low one, is a, some kind of reverse delay, psych delay is the name I think, and I automated it, and this is like a reverb from the FM8 FX plugin. So it's a reverb, psych delay, and you can put it on reverse, which has a really cool effect. And with that on, you get the automation. I think that if you listen to the track on YouTube or Spotify, you can you can hear the little effects. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. I use this novel tech character. Um, it's something like if you know FL Studio Sound Goodizer, this is a little bit of the same. Actually, I like this more because it has more like options to set it, and just enhances the sound. And then there's a reverb on top of it. It's a really big reverb with a lot of echo um, and this is almost the only sound with this big reverb. The other sounds are pretty much dry, some small reverbs maybe. Something is Okay, so then with all these leads, um, I have the toms again from the intro. So these... Oh. These two, the most worst sounding toms ever, um, but in the mix they work perfectly. And we start the track with a sample, a brass sound shot. So that's basically the drop. We have a small, some small fills here. Oh, um, here's a bass fill. It's a, it's a growl sound from Serum. Um, and actually, this is just the patch that makes the sound because I only put on a reverb, and that's it. There's some hi hats come. And we go into the... So this is an interesting part. I tried to make... I wanted to keep it interesting and groovy. So... I lowered the whole track. Remember it was F sharp before, now it's C sharp. Like all the sounds go to C sharp. Except for some percussion that doesn't need a change, and the kick, it stays on the same key because it was just too low for the kick and you wouldn't feel any punch. And the hi hat loops from the intro, they are there as well. We have some rises. And you go back to the original F sharp drop. Um, some people asked for the fill, so let me show you. Here we have one interesting fill. So we used a lot of scratch samples, like, and I cut them all up to fit behind each other, a uh, super small drum fill, also a bit scratchy sound, and then of course the vocal. And that together makes the, is the fill already. Oh wait, here's a snare. 
snare. But that's the whole fill, it's actually quite simple. And the last part we have some other sounds that got introduced. These are the riser and a hoover. And that's basically it, the second Whoa. second break has a few new elements, but I think it's more interesting to show you the vocal project, so I'm going to open it right now. I recorded it in my room. Um, my room has these, I made these panels, on, and they are in every corner almost. Um, and they help a lot with the acoustic information, so it's for me it worked fine to record the vocals over here. Um, so let me show you. I actually did one take, and over here you see three layers of vocals, but they are all the same, but just routed to different mixer tracks over here. Can you see the mixer? No, you can. Um, so let me show you. This is one layer. To all the girls raising all eyes, time to turn it up all right. You need to make that body shine. This girl just feel my bass line. To all the girls raising all So it's a heavily vocoded sound. The second one is. It's super deep. And then the third one is like the main normal. To all the girls raising all night, it's time to turn it up all right. You need to make that booty shine. It's girl, just feel my bass line to all. Um, so what I did, because it sounded horrible at first, I used autotune, of course, but without it, no way. <laughs> um, I have this little tool, little, little Alter Boy. I used it a lot for vocals, um, for this normal layer I turn down the formant so your voice sounds much more interesting a little bit lower but um how to say it it's cooler to all the girls raving all night it's time to turn it up all right you need then there's an eq some distortion again from camel crusher right. a lot of compression because um it's an organic signal and it goes like the volume is not constant at all, so I needed a lot of compression to make it somewhat on the same level constantly. A de -esser, um so you don't get that much high S sounds, it just filters it out. And another EQ. So that's a normal layer, this is quite easy. Um, I then added a deep layer, that's the one you heard. And it has almost the same processing as the other layer, as the other sound, and just it's one octave down. That's the only difference. And um, the EQ, I turned off all the high frequencies because you pitch it down 12 semitones, so one octave. Um, the high end just didn't sound that good anymore, and it, I don't need it because you, because we have the other layer. So, and then for the third layer, I used the vocoder. Um, to all the girls raising all night, it's time to turn it up all right. It's a robot kind of sound. And as a layer, it worked really well. I used Vocodex. It's FL Studio's um, vocoder. Um, and I used it with a simple synth input. F uh, this is only, it's a saw wave and that's it. Um, and with the vocoder and some distortion can get really cool effects. If you don't know how to set this up, press, like in, if you work in FL Studio, you can press F1 whenever you click on it, press F1, and here you get the tutorial, like setup inputs, and they explain everything on how to do it. So if you don't know how to use these kind of things or how to set it up properly, press F1 and they will explain it to you. So all together, to all the girls raising all night, it's time to turn it up all right. You need to make that booty shine. This girl just feel my bass line. To all the girls, it sounded pretty cool. 
Um, of course, on the final, there's some reverb as well. Um, and I started to pitch for the build up. My my bass line, my bass line, my bass. So only the vocoded signal get pitched up and it's easy to do because you can just pitch up the, the, the synth in a file studio and then it pitches up the whole vocal because you're using a vocoder. So that's the vocal part and now finally I'm going to show you the master although it's not that interesting I think but a lot of guys always ask about the mastering. So I'm opening it right now, um, but something about mastering, like all the people, they always want to know how did you master it, um, but the mix needs to be really, really good already. I can, I will show it to you. I think this master just took me like 50 minutes maximum and, um, and that's it. Okay, I think it's going to crash, so, yep. Open master. Okay. So it's super simple. I, I always do the mastering in a separate project. I bounce out the file. It's here the mix. Um, and the only effects on there are first a multiband compressor. Actually, I used a preset from FabFilter because it sounded really good. It's EDM Master Part 2 of 3. Uh, what it does, it makes the low end a bit more tight. The mid, it cuts it out a little bit, so you create this smile effect and the high gets enhanced a bit. After that, a compressor, a normal compressor. Then, an imager. Uh, I like to use Ozone Imager because you can set different bands, so the low end you won't don't even touch it or just turn it down actually, and then the higher you get, the more you can push it a little bit wider. And then we have the limiter, and that's it. And the limiter, I love this invisible limiter. It's it can go really loud if your mix is good, and that's the thing. Like the master won't change your song. You need to make a good mix and yeah if we play this that's that's the whole track and I also use this it's a free analyzer from uh, Voxango span to analyze all the frequencies over here you see your RMS values so you know how loud it is compared to like other songs um, yeah, and that's the mastering guys, it's nothing special, just to be, sh be sure to make your mix uh, interesting and clean and as good as possible. If the mix is not good, your master won't be good as well. Um, I think that's it, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I will try to comment back to you because we couldn't do a live stream as I told you so um, like tonight or tomorrow I will start answering all the questions you have um, you can also shoot me a message on Facebook um, ask it ask it there whatever you want so be sure to check out Dirty Baseline on Spotify, Beatport, wherever your favorite store is check it out, share it with your friends um yeah thanks for tuning in don't forget me to follow me on facebook twitter instagram it's at medics music and i hope to see you soon with a new uh, live stream or on my socials cheers guys